Hello and welcome to AC 1002 Lecture 19. This lecture will look at uh, some of the details around uh, roof construction and the envelope of the roof. So from earlier lectures where we were looking at the timber frame and the building envelope, we know that the building envelope has to deal with a number of different factors, all of which are interconnected. Um, and the roof envelope is, is really no different. Uh, we need to deal with uh, insulation for heat loss, we need to deal with vapour within the building and uh, ways to ventilate that. Now they're done slightly differently from those of the, the building envelope um, and there are two main ways of constructing a, a roof envelope to deal with those factors. So this lecture is going to look at the principles of uh, constructing a cold roof and uh, a warm roof. So there are two main types of, of, of roof when we're looking at pitched roof, a warm roof and a cold roof. And, and the warm roof is essentially where the space above the ceiling, uh, let's call it the loft, um, lies within the insulation envelope. So the insulation follows the, the rafter line of the, the roof, it follows the pitch line of the roof. And that triangle of space in the loft is, is, is warm and it's, it's within uh, the heated space of the house. A cold roof is the opposite, where um, you install insulation at ceiling level and the space above is, is cold and, and ventilated. So if we look at a warm roof, first of all, there are a number of different uh, advantages and disadvantages. The uh, One of the main advantages of a, a warm roof is that the space up into that uh, loft space can be useful. We can we can utilise it for, for um, functions within the building. Not necessarily that we're going to uh, have extra rooms up there, but that is a possibility. But we can also put um, services within that space. We can we can store things within the space without the fear that they're going to get uh, cold or damaged by by, by damp. Um, any services within a within a warm roof loft, um, there's no or, or reduced possibility that. Uh, pipes and tanks will, will freeze. The disadvantages are that um, it can be more difficult to install insulation, it's more difficult to install uh, vapour barriers, uh, the junctions are, are more difficult, um, so there's more opportunity that mistakes might be made in the installation. In addition to that, um, because there isn't any insulation at the ceiling, we can find that the, the heated space, space spaces below that can actually pass most of their heat up into the loft space. So the loft can become unnecessarily warm and uh, if nobody's using that space then effectively we're heating a larger volume of the house without uh, without using it. So if we look at a warm roof and, and, and think about how it uh, might be made, this is a quite a simple example. We can see uh, there's a, a pitch that goes up and back down the other side. We've got a timber frame with um, with block work or brickwork on the outside and uh, tiles on the roof. And the insulation for the, the warm roof is installed to the depth of the rafters and between the rafters. So in the same way that we've got uh, timber studs with insulation between them, we would do that with the, the, the roof. So the rafters would uh, be the structure element and the, the insulation would be installed between them. And because we need to ensure that the the roof is a, or the, the building envelopes a continuous um, line or there's there's overlap between uh, insulation so there's no cold bridges we need to make sure that the the, the insulation from the the roof laps with the insulation from the the timber kit so it would be brought down to make sure that there was kind of double the depth of insulation at that eaves joint to make sure there was no cold bridges and in the same way that we've got a, a, a breather membrane to the outside of a, a timber wall, we have to be able to, to allow any moisture within the construction to, to, to breathe outward. So we install the, the, the breather membrane so that not only keeps um, any moisture from entering from the outside in the form of, of, of rain or precipitation snow, um, it also allows water vapour to escape when the, when the sun heats up the, the construction. And internally, the vapour barrier um, would have to be continuous between the, the, the wall and the, the roof, and it would have to uh, 
be sealed at uh, any kind of complicated junctions. So it's a very similar construction to uh, a timber um, timber frame wall. Um, we've got rafters instead of studs. We've got insulation between those rafters, a breather membrane on the outside, and a vapor barrier on the inside. If we look at a cold roof um, by comparison, again it has advantages and disadvantages, um, and they're the kind of opposite of the the warm roof ones. The advantages are that really we're only speaking, heating the space that we we need to heat. We're not heating a an unused uh, loft space. Um, it's very easy to install insulation at ceiling level. We usually roll. Um, mineral wool out between the, the, the ceiling joists, uh, or the ceiling structure, and uh, then go in the opposite direction so that we're covering the ceiling structure. But it's it's usually, you know, rolled material, mineral wool, um, and because the space above it is is ventilated, there's less, less emphasis on the performance of a breather membrane. We're getting rid of the, vo the, the moisture by ventilating the, the, the whole space. The disadvantages are that um, we can't really use that space up there. We can't can't create rooms in the in the in the loft. We can store things, um, but if, essentially, if it's anything that's going to get cold, it's the same temperature as the outside air. Um, so it would have to be things that we're able to deal with that. If we were to put uh, any water services, so pipes or water cylinders or water tanks within that space, we would need to make sure that they weren't going to freeze. So that could be insulation around tanks or um, trace heating elements to make sure that they're kept above freezing temperature. So if we look at a, a cold roof, um, same kind of diagram, same uh, roof finish, but we can see that the insulation is actually installed um, at ceiling level. So we would go over the top, now I've written between and over rafters, but that actually should be um, ceiling joists, that's a mistake. But it goes between them and over the top of them. So we want to make sure that we're covering all the structure. Now, usually with a, a cold roof, you would probably install um, quite a lot more insulation. You're probably using mineral wool, which maybe isn't as good as the rigid insulation you might use for a warm roof. But it would have to go over the top of, of any structure to avoid any cold bridges. And again, we would probably install just to make sure that... Uh, we were waterproofing the structure, we would install a breather membrane on the outside um, or a, a roofing felt. So it could actually be a, a, a membrane that doesn't doesn't breathe, but it would have to be something there that would protect um, the, the roof from the ingress of, of water. And like the uh, warm roof, the insulation would have to lap with that of the, the timber kit to avoid any cold bridges. A vapour barrier would be continuous from the, the, the wall um, and would probably go across the ceiling and uh, this is consistent with the Scottish accredited details where they show a vapour barrier going across the ceiling. Um, in my experience building control officers usually ask for a vapour barrier to be omitted at this point because the, the moisture can be dealt with within the loft space. I personally think putting a vapour barrier in there is a good idea. I'd rather not run the risk of moisture condensing within the depth of the um, the, the ceiling insulation, uh, but I have come against uh, building control officers who uh, would argue that point with me. Now, the space above the, the insulation has to be ventilated, and the reason we ventilate is because if there's any moist air that's passing upwards through the construction, um, one way that we can get rid of moist air is allowing uh, air from the outside to pass through that space and carry the moist air away with it. So um, the usual way of doing that is to allow ventilation at uh, eaves level. So if we're looking at the um, the eaves of the roof, we've got the fascia, which is the, the vertical board, um, the one that the gutters are fitted onto, and the soffit, which is the, the, the board that's on the underside of the, the, the truss. And, uh, and a lot of buildings you'll see proprietary ventilators, little plastic grills that you can get air into. And we need uh, enough in, enough air passing through there, which is the equivalent of having a 10 millimeter continuous gap. So if you were to have a six meter long building, um, you would have to kind of have enough ventilation 
to, to be the equivalent of a six meter long, 10 millimeter wide gap. Um, you can leave a gap there, but um, it's usual to actually use a, a grill or something with a fly mesh because you don't want uh, wasps or insects um, getting into the roof. And because we're ventilating down at the, the lower level of the, the roof, we have to allow that air to pass up into the, the, the triangle of the, the loft space. So we would usually install a, a tray and that just stops the insulation from kind of puffing out and sealing up that gap. Because if we're sealing that gap, then there's no way for the air to move out. And we would um, build that up in a, in, in a number of different ways. And, and the, the key junction for understanding the different types of roof is the, the, the eaves junction. So if we think about a roof, the, the, the pointy bit at the top is the, is the ridge where the roof comes down and meets the wall. That is the, the eaves. And there's a number of different design considerations we need to think about. So we need to understand the, the type of roof. Do we need to incorporate ventilation so it's a warmer, cold roof? Um, how are we going to get rid of rainwater that runs down the, the, the roof? How do we fix gutters? Um, what's the wall cladding below? So how, how thick is the wall? Do we need to push our eaves further out to take account of, of a very um, thick uh, wall buildup? So if it was granite on the outside of a timber frame, it would be much thicker than it would be if it was brickwork. What's the aesthetic intention? What do you want the roof to look like? You can have um, large oversailing eaves which make your, your roof look like a, a, a lid or a hat over it, or you can have a very uh, minimal eaves so that the, the shape of the building is the thing that's, that, that's red. So some sort of architectural intention um, is going to have a, a consideration when we're designing uh, eaves. We also need to know what the material finish of the roof is and how does that roof finish or roof material then stop when it gets to the to the eaves. So we'll look at a couple of examples. And these are taken from the uh, Scottish accredited details and we can see that uh, within our construction we have um, our ventilation gap at that point there. So we've got our 10 millimeter minimum continuous uh, ventilation gap. And there's a little note there about the, the roof pitch. So it does actually change depending on the roof pitch. Um, so our air can, can pass up through that, follow that route there. And we have uh, our insulation uh, running at that point there. Very difficult to draw that with a mouse. In fact, next to impossible. Um, and we need to allow the ventilation path to move all the way up into the loft space. And we use a, a cross flow ventilation tree. Um, we have a, a board at a eaves level, which is our fascia, which is this vertical board here. And onto that, we fit our gutter onto to clips. And underneath this, we have a soffit board. Now there's some other construction um, Round about here, so you can have a look at these details, but we won't go into um, into that in, in this lecture. So, the the cross flow ventilator is effectively a, a, a plastic tree that uh, that lies within the the construction. It sits, it's corrugated, it sits over the top of the the rafters uh, and provides a space for for air to to pass over. And then there's a a, a preformed uh, flashing which comes over and forms a drip and the gutter would actually be installed somewhere there so that any water passing down this would actually drip onto the gutter and be taken away but air is effectively flowing up these corrugations and into the uh, the roof space. The, the different um, difference between a cold roof and a warm roof eaves is that we, we don't require that ventilation into, into the space. And you can see on, on this detail here, we, uh, we still have our uh, gutter on a clip. So there's a kind of clip at the back there. We have our um, fascia board and we have our soffit board, but there's no, there's no ventilator within the soffit. Um, instead, because we have uh, roof tiles, there's a little bit of a, a ventilator, which is a kind of a rigid uh, plastic uh, board similar to the, the, the cross flow ventilator but much smaller that allows a little bit of air to 
to pass up and underneath the tiles, but we're not getting air into the space um, of the roof. It's not the not the point. And you can see we have our um, our uh, vapor barrier on the, the inside there, and we have our breather membrane on on the outside. So regardless of the type of roof, whether it's a, a warm or cold roof, we can install different materials onto our, onto our roof. And we'll look at look at three of these materials. And realistically, we can we can probably break down most domestic roofs into three different uh, types. We've we've either got um, natural split stone, um, so in different parts of the country that could be different types of slate or um, uh, large flagstones or sandstone or I would even say that uh, timber shingles would probably fall into that they're not stone but they're they're, they're split timber uh, elements which look a lot like slate and the way that they're installed onto a typical Scottish roof and you'll notice that I have purposefully written the word Scottish up there because this is a different detail from they would do in England we have a, a sarking board so these are rigid boards and I, I talked a little bit about this in the last lecture where there's a, a, a timber board that's installed with a, a little gap between it so that uh, any moisture can pass through that. We've got a, a breather membrane that sits on top of that and be stapled onto it. And then we have our uh, slates uh, over the top of that. And the, the, the way that slates are installed, um, we can see that um, you know the normal way on the roof is we, we get to see a, a, a bit of a slate um, there. But what we're actually seeing is a, is a very small section of the slate. We're, we're, we're seeing uh, a section about that size. But in reality, the slate that starts at that point continues all the way up to here, where it would be nailed onto the, the sarking with uh, copper nails. And looking at, at uh, this image here, where we've got slates, what's happening at, at each of the, the joints there is that um, every time we get a course of slates, we're actually three slates thick. And that allows uh, a little bit of protection um, from water running down the roof, so that, that as the water rolls off one slate, um, it's not got the potential to, to um, kind of get through the gaps between the slates um, and there's always a, an overlap and depending on the exposure we would we would change that overlap there um, or it would be different sizes depending on the, the overlap and we would refer to that as the, the, the headlap of the, the slate. So we've got um, our natural slates tend to be about 8 millimeters to 10 millimeters thick and uh, probably about uh, 500 to 600 millimetres long, even though we're only going to see about uh, 200 to, to 300 of them. Um, the breather membrane's over the top of the sarking boards, and then we've got our, our uh, timber sarking. So it's quite a simple construction, um, but it does require you to, to kind of understand the, the kind of mechanics of being able to fix it. The second type of roof uh, rather than a, a natural split material, is uh, a man-made um, tile. And these are most commonly installed on, on uh, cheaper properties. Uh, you would buy these from a manufacturer. And the normal way for, for installing these would be um, onto uh, batten. So immediately onto our, our rafter, we would install um, something like a uh, a rigid sarking board. So if it's a cheap construction, it would probably be um, plywood or OSB or something like that. And then running down the roof, we would have um, our uh, breather membrane at that position. And on top of that, we would have uh, softwood battens, treated softwood battens. So they would be treated with a, a, a chemical to stop them uh, rotting or, or um, attracting insects and that uh, those battens would run down the roof on top of the, 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 the uh, rafters and on top of those we would have um, these batten elements so it forms a kind of crisscross pattern of, of, of timbers 
Uh, and the reason that we have the, the battens running down the roof before we have the ones running across the roof is that we can have a, a space underneath there so that any moisture or any water doesn't get caught um, at that point behind the, the, the batten. So we need that gap uh, underneath them. And these tiles um, are held onto these, these battens. We have uh, a profile to the back of them, so they come down and they have a little check in the back of them that, that sits into uh, onto those battens and uh, comes down. And at the bottom end, there's usually a little corrugation and that just helps with any water that, that could pass back up the uh, underside of the tile through um, capillary action. And the third type of roof that we tend to encounter is a, is a, a sheet material or a, or a sheet metal material. And again, we have uh, our rafters sitting at that point, but rather than the sarking sitting directly on top of the rafter, we tend to see that our, uh, our breather membrane would run down the roof um, and would be uh, stapled onto the top of the, the rafter. And then again, we would have a, a batten that uh, forms a, a ventilation void um, that would run down the, the, the roof on top of the rafters. And running against that, we would have a, a series of timber sarking boards. Um, a lot of metals need uh, need ventilation from uh, below up that space to make sure that there's there's air getting to the back of the the, the metal so that it doesn't uh, rust from from behind so if it's a, a steel material we want to make sure there's plenty of plenty of air getting to the back of it uh, zinc will also corrode if it's if it's allowed to be wet and, and, and doesn't dry out and then on to the top of this um, uh, the the sarking our uh, metal would be would be applied and this this line that you're seeing in the background is is, is the crimp of uh, of the metal um, I'll attempt to draw how the metal works in, at the side here so if we were to cut across the the roof um, I've made this the most disgusting colourful drawing so I might as well use purple I haven't used that before but um, effectively what we would have is we would have a, a sheet of metal that would um, have a little upturn edge to it and where the next sheet of metal comes in um, we would interlock that down into it and it would go off and, and make the, the same joint at the other side and then there would be a, a machine that comes along and it effectively squeezes that joint in and uh, keeps it nice and tight so you end up getting these um, these crimps these uh, seams running down the roof so, in conclusion, the, the choice of roof for most domestic properties is usually either a cold roof or a, a warm roof, and each has advantages and disadvantage, disadvantages which you need to understand before um, or while, while making uh, design decisions. Technical design of both, design, uh, both roofs is different, so we need to think about them in different ways. And we need to understand where the, the insulation is and how we're going to deal with water vapour or uh, ventilation. There's a variety of materials that can be used for roofs, um, but generally they split into, into different categories. So a split material, natural split material, such as slate uh, or, or stone, or indeed uh, timber shingles. We've got man-made tiles, which tend to be made of concrete, um, or we have uh, sheet materials, which tend to be metal, so zinc, aluminium, and that sort of thing. So aspects that you should take from this lecture are that uh, a warm roof is insulated at rafter level and creates a warm space in the loft, and that a cold roof is insulated at ceiling level and creates a cold space in the loft. That a cold roof is ventilated to deal with the moisture, whereas a warm roof relies on a vapour barrier um, and a breather membrane to deal, with, to deal with moisture. And that different types of roof uh, require different forms of construction. Okay, thank you very much for listening, and uh, if you've got any questions or any comments, please let me know.